This is the quadruple murder case involving Henry Sagara. A single mother and her three young children were found brutally slain in her Florida home, and it would take nearly a decade before their killer was brought to justice. On November 20, 2010, police in Tallahassee respond to the resident of 27-year-old Brandy Peters after a neighbor requested a well-being check on the family. Inside the home, officers discovers Peters fatally shot and the bodies of her son, Javante III, and six-year-old twins, daughter, Tamalia and Tania, submerged in a partially filled bathroom. Investigators determined Tamia, like her mother, was fatally shot while the other two young victims had been drowned. Authorities identified Peter's boyfriend, Henry Sagara, as a suspect in the case, and police arrested him in Lee, Sator County, Minnesota, 10 months after the slaying. In the summer of 2017, Sagara was tried for the quadruple murder, but a judge declared a mistrial after the jury deadlocked. Sagara took the stand and testified in his own defense. Sagara admitted while he lied to the police about being at the victim's home the night they died, he claimed he had a reason, his marriage. When it pertains to me cheating on my wife, yes, I lied to the police, Henry Sagara stated, because I didn't want her to find out I was over there. Sagara claimed he first heard the news about the murders from his hairstylist. I have no reason whatsoever to kill my son or those twins, neither Brandy. Sagara, who was Javante, biological father, insisted in court. But prosecutors were not convinced of any arguments, and neither did they want the jury to buy his stories. They believed that he had plenty of reason to kill Brandy and her three children. The number one reason prosecutors believe is that Henry Sagara was enraged over the $20,000 in child support he owed for Javante and he was facing possible jail time if he didn't pay up. Sagara's former cellmate took to the stand and alleged the defendant confessed to the crime. The cellmate claimed that Henry confessed that he killed his baby's mom because him and her were going through some child support issues and he was upset. Kelsey Kinnard testified. He killed her and the kids and everybody. Sagara defense team, meanwhile, presented a witness that potentially could have derailed the prosecution case. In prison, Mexican drug cartel member James Carlos Santos came forward and said he ordered a hit on Peters because she had stolen $90,000 worth of drugs and cash while working as a drug mule. The theory, according to the outlet, was blastered when DNA evidence collected from Peters' bedroom was determined to be a possible match with a known Colombian cocaine trafficker, Angel Avila Cunos. Avila Cunos denied allegation he had anything to do with Peters' murder and her family dismissed claims the mother was ever involved in drug running. Prosecutor countered in the court that cartel member Santos, who was allegedly diagnosed with schizophrenia, previously tried to take credit for other murders, but his claim was never proven, according to the Washington Post. On November 20th, 2019, nine years to the day Peters and her children lost their lives, Henry Sagara was found guilty of the quadruple murders. Prosecutor John Fuchs stated, we always felt Mr. Henry Sagara was guilty of, guilty of all the charges. We were not about to drop the charges, and so we persevered on and ended up where we did today. There's no one else that it makes sense committed this crime, noted the prosecutor. No one else had that motive and have a 32 revolver and was there on the night at the time. At some point, one plus one equals three. And with Sagara was sentenced to life in prison in Florida without the possibility of parole for the quadruple murder. Henry Sagara was a serial cheater and manipulator to many, many women woman. And unfortunately, some of them was blinded by him and his sweet talk and believe everything that he says out of his mouth. I think when Brandy fought hard to hold him accountable, he snapped. While Henry was married, he also had a fiance, which is his fiance till this day, that advocate for his innocent. As mentioned by the prosecutor, Brandy Peters had no known enemies and did not have a quarrel with anyone before her death. The only person that she was in the midst of a court 
process with was Henry Sagara and the lack of him not paying child support to their three-year-old son, Javante. Although Henry Sagara, wife at the time, did not know about his affair with Brandy Peters, she was well aware that her husband was a cheater and that he had cheated with her many times within their marriage. So I don't think that if she had found out that Brandy was in a relationship with her husband, it would have caused the marriage any more more damage than it already was. So I must say I agree with the prosecutor that the motive was that he did not want to be held accountable for the $20,000 back child support and any money paying forward. He really was never a father to Javante in the three years that he lived. And he really didn't want that responsibility. He just wanted to have a good time with as many women as he possibly could. And Brandy Peters were getting in the midst of that. In all actuality, Henry Sagara should not have married anyone whatsoever. He was not a faithful man. He was not a family man and he did not have any devotion or loyalty to any said woman. It's very sad that this young 27-year-old woman, Brandy Peters, had to lose her life, but not just lose her life and being executed in her own home, but her young daughter being executed, her other daughter and her son drowning. And knowing that there's somebody capable of doing all of that is very, very scary and evil. Henry Sagara should have known the consequences that comes with living the kind of life that he was living, having multiple affairs with different people. You cannot play with someone's heart and you cannot predict the outcome or make the outcome that you want when you're dealing with others' feelings. My prayers and condolences goes out to Brandy's family and the three precious children that lost their lives on that fateful night. May their soul rest in heavenly peace. Until next Next time on the Meaningful Talk Crime Doc, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch up with you guys later in the comment section.